Welcome, did you miss us? We've been off for two weeks. My husband and I celebrated our 35th wedding anniversary and went to Hawaii and we had a fabulous time. Oh my goodness, love Hawaii. Well, this is a really, this is Holy Week, right? And um, look at, oh, I just got exciting stuff going on. For those of you that can notice, you know, tonight we're gonna be talking about how, today's Monday, Thursday, right? Right. And this past Sunday we celebrated Palm Sunday. And it's interesting, I visited some friends in, in on the island of Oahu, and we went to an Anglican, Anglican church, and we did the whole procession with the psalms, with the palms, and and um, one of the and one of the gentlemen that was the gentleman that was giving the message, um, he he just said something really I liked. He was talking about how everybody laid down their garments as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, and by laying down their garments, they were saying, you know their identity, how they were known, what was important to them. It didn't matter. They were going to strip it all down for Jesus. And I feel like this whole Holy Week, we want you to imagine that you are Jerusalem and that we are preparing the way for the Lord because the Lord is coming. And He wants to be resurrected again in our lives in a new and a fresh way. Mm -hmm. So tonight's going to be all about looking at our hearts and saying, are we willing to lay it all down for Jesus? Are we recognizing who He is and recognizing the birth process that can really go on? I'm really excited today for me, a real birthing experience was I took off my boot. I don't know if you noticed, but the left foot has a shoe on. Well, it's interesting. My husband, like we packed only one shoe of all my shoes and it was so fun. I got to have more choices because I only needed one. And it was so tempting like to not worry about the other sock and the other shoe. And I thought, no, there's gonna come a time when I need that shoe again. And I feel like sometimes the Lord also has us take things out of our life for a season, mm -hmm. but then there's time to bring it back in. So I'm hoping the symbolism of me not having a boot, me very excited that I was able to, uh, the surgeon allowed me to take my boot off yesterday and slowly begin to walk again. Um, I'm thrilled. <coughs> I know that many times I have things over my head saying, well, if my infection comes back, they're going to go in and take all my hard work. Oh my gosh, that was like took my breath away. That is not the plan I had. Oh my gosh, that would be scary as all get out. But I thought to myself, you know what? I just got to embrace today. God gives me enough strength to handle today, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to have enough trouble its own. So I'm hoping on these, these opening words are encouraging someone because I know some of you only tap in for a little bit. So hopefully it, that was something you needed to hear. But again, another cool thing we're going to do tonight is we're going to celebrate communion with you. So if you have time, put us on pause. Go get yourself um, some juice and some bread and partake with us. I think it's going to be a really neat representation of what we're learning and what God is trying to do in our hearts this week. So mm -hmm. we're excited. So it's yeah. final week. It's final week of Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to look at the final week and we're going to look at... Um, you know how how important, according to the Gospels, uh, just the, the last the last week was. You know, mm -hmm. a third of Matthew is dedicated to just the last week. Nice. A third of Mark, uh, a quarter of Luke, and half of John, almost wow. half of John, is just for the last wow. week. So that just shows you how important the very final pieces mm -hmm. of, of what Jesus story, was yeah. doing and mm -hmm. saying and and doing mm -hmm. uh, were are a part of our story, right? And nice. his story, what he did for us. So uh, like my wife said, we want you to imagine that Jerusalem is your heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like last week, uh, Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphant entry, you know? That's that place in our hearts where we open our hearts and we mm -hmm. allow him, you know, the, the rulership. We, you know, we give him mm -hmm. our life, mm -hmm. uh, our identity, everything. And, and we, uh, you know, proclaim him as king of our, of our soul, of our mm -hmm. life, you know? Uh, he came in and it, it was a fulfillment in Zechariah 9.9. It says, rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, low and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Mm -hmm. And so they, they welcomed him, you know, shouting Hosanna. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the word Hosanna comes from the word save. And so, so we're going to read this. I'm going to read this real quickly. Matthew 21, it says, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Mm -hmm. King of kings, Hosanna, Amen. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, so for us, as we fight our battles in this present day world, um, you know, we, we look for others to help us, you know, and yet, you know, that's what they were looking for with Jesus when he came. You know, they were under Roman rule and they wanted to, um, they wanted to overthrow it. And so they were hoping that Jesus would have done that. Mm -hmm. But he had another plan. Mm -hmm. uh, his plan was 
uh, to come and to fight the final battle, which was the battle over death, mm -hmm. right, and judgment. Mm -hmm. And so that's why he came. And so a few things we're going to point out on that last week, especially as he's going towards Jerusalem. The first thing is he, he weeps over Jerusalem, right? In Luke 19, it says, he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city, and he wept over it. And he said, if you, mm -hmm. even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, and so Jesus knows that there's places in our heart yes. that we're still in ignorance. There's still places that we're still in the dark. We don't, they're hidden from our And eyes. his desire is to bring us peace. Absolutely. Whenever we're struggling with something or wrestling with something, trust me, he's trying to get our attention because he's the one that's going to settle things. We're not going to do that on mm -hmm. our own. Mm -hmm. You know, in John 8, 31 and 32, Benji said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word and you are my disciples indeed, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That's right. That's right. That those, this is why he came, not just for our sin, but for us to live abundantly mm -hmm. so we can know truth, walk in it, excel in it, share it, bring it to who we need to bring it. That's, That's right. what's leading the captives free means. That's right. Breaking those strongholds. He wants you to be free, you mm -hmm. know. And so, but to, to be free, he needs to do some things, just like yes. he did in Jerusalem. So on Monday... Right? Yeah. So after Palm Sunday, on Monday, he goes to the temple. Yeah, and he cleans it, huh? And he cleans it up. Yeah. In Matthew 21, it says, He entered the temple courts, and he drove out all who were buying and selling there. Mm -hmm. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of the selling doves. He said, It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So what was happening is they turned it to like a swap meet, you know? And that was supposed to be a place where people come, and mm -hmm. they discover who God is. And, and I just found that so interesting because that's what God does in our hearts. You know, sometimes he'll, un, un, he'll reveal things that are in our hearts that maybe mm. you know, some of our own selfish desires, some of our own things that we want. But God wants to replace that with the heart of prayer. Because why? Because when you walk in that place of prayer, you walk in a place of peace. You know, you walk in that place of assurance and strength and power mm. because you know that God's with you. Right. And so mm -hmm. you've dedicated that part of your heart to God. And so, so it was very interesting that he came in first thing and he cleaned it out, right? Mm -hmm. So my question for myself is, are there some areas in my life that I still need to clean out? That I still need to say, mm -hmm. you know, God, here you go. Go ahead and turn over the table. Go ahead and release this, right? Um, I think that's the key. So that was Monday. Tuesday, he walks into uh, towards Jerusalem and he sees a fig tree that is not bearing fruit. Now, mm -hmm. um, so he looks at it and it's like, and he curses it. He says... You know, you, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. The next day, Peter notices that the, the tree was fully withered. Um, mm. And so then Jesus challenges him. He uses this scenario to speak to him about faith. And so in Mark, he says, have faith in God, Jesus answers. Truly, I say to you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not count in their heart, but believes what, that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Mm. And so he was challenging them to say, hey, you know, it's, it's a step of faith. It's a journey of faith. Mm -hmm. And so and so, what happens is if we don't walk in faith, we're going to be like the fig tree. There's going to be no fruit in it. Right. There's going to be nothing and we will right. wither away. So it was a challenge to us, you know. Mm -hmm. So my question for me is, are there places of faith that I still lack? Are there some places in my life that I'm still like trusting in myself? And not or, really or, that, or we God. think we're doing and blooming, but we're really not. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're being our fig tree, but mm -hmm. we don't really have any fruit for anybody to come and grab. Yeah. And that's why Jesus cursed, because people were excited. They want to go to a fig tree. They want to get the sweet from it. Mm -hmm. But to see that it had nothing on it, it's it like, it. Yeah. what good is that? Yeah, Wednesday's known as Spy Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, that was the old term back in the old day. Um, and while Jesus was resting in Bethany at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, um, there was a plot going on. The high priest authorities, they wanted to kill Jesus. Mm. And Judas went to the chief priests and the authorities. Mm. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity oh, to betray Oh, he was spying them. for the opportunity? Exactly. Oh. And, the, and the guy and the, you know, the leaders, the religious leaders were spying and, and looking, where is he? Where is he? Where is mm. he going? What's he going to do? How can we, how can we kill him? Right? Mm. And so, um, so he would soon betray Jesus for the price of a slave, which is 30 Very symbolic, points, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Which... Fulfills another scripture in Zechariah. It says, I told them, if you think it best, give me my pay, but if not, keep it. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, throw it to the potter, the handsome price of which they valued me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them to the potter at the house of the Lord. That was a, a, an Old Testament prophecy that was pointing to that something was going to happen where 
someone, the Messiah was going to be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. um, and so during that time, while he was in Bethany, there was a woman, uh, she came to Jesus and she anointed his feet with perfume. Mm -hmm. And Matthew, Mark, and John recorded um, this in the Passover. And, um, and he was anointed by, by his burial by this woman. And uh, she, Matthew and Mark, interesting, this same scenario, they record that she anointed his head and Luke and John recorded that she anointed his feet. So we just um, assume she did both, right? Yeah, exactly. He did, mm -hmm. he did both. But, to, but each side looked at just one part of it. Now, I imagine the part for his head was because it's symbolic of a king. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever a king or a priest was to be anointed for a special service, they were anointed in their head, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and then the woman was uh, anointing his feet also because of her own gratitude to the Lord. Right, because that's what gets dirty and takes the beating when you walk around with no shoes and mm -hmm. in the dirt. And mm -hmm. she wanted to sanctify them and say, everything, you know, everything. Like, I want to clean even your feet. Mm -hmm. I'll be humble to do even what's the dirtiest on you. And that's I want right. to anoint that. That's right. You know, like in Matthew 26, when Jesus was in Bethany, uh, a woman came to him having a flask, a very costly fragrant oil. She pours it on his head as he sat at the table. But it's interesting because the disciples were indignant and they're mm. saying, why this waste? Mm. This oil could have been sold for much and given to the poor. But Jesus was aware of it. He said, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. Mm -hmm. And then he says something very interesting. He says, for in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Mm -hmm. And so, so imagine this. So Jesus, you know, in just a few hours is going to be hanging on the cross. And he's now fully anointed with this fragrant oil, right? Mm -hmm. So while he's suffering on that cross, I can imagine that he could smell yeah. the fragrant oil yeah. of this woman, right? That was comforting him in his hour of greatest need. Exactly. So her most humble, humble act was what really filled him. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Yeah. You know, we had that happen when we went to Hawaii. Somebody opened up their home for us because we had a pipe burst in the Airbnb that we were supposed to stay at. And they put a bulletin out among the churches because I have some uh, friends in Oahu. And somebody said, oh yeah, there's a woman in the church that has a downstairs apartment. And it was so sweet because she, I was so blessed to get to stay there and to meet her and really connected with her. And she said, you know, I was feeling the same way. I was feeling like she wanted that a special, she had been feeling alone or just needing that extra blessing. And because she was so humble to open up her home mm -hmm. and say, well, it's not the Hilton, but if you want to stay with me, let me tell you, it was close to the Hilton. <laughs> but anyway, right. Um, right. she got blessed. So, and then of course, my husband and I were blessed beyond words. Mm -hmm. And so in a time of need where we felt stuck financially, how are we going to find a place? And, and here we were gifted with a place that was more beautiful than anything we could have done on our own. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes, you know, even our most humble sacrifice or our hardest struggle, God wants to pour fragrance in it. That's right. He wants to show you that he was aware even of the detail. I know sometimes when we're going through trials, we think, does God really know how much I'm struggling in this trial? Be aware. There's a fragrance of the Lord. Sometimes you're the one that brings the fragrance. Don't be afraid to lay your life down with your friends and really help those in need because you're that fragrance. You're that blessing. You're the hands and feet of the Lord to really minister to them. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really cool. You know, she did that to prepare him for burial. Mm -hmm. She didn't even understand it. It was just a prophetic it. thing. Yeah. So Thursday, the Passover meal, what we're right. all, it's, today's right. the big day, deliverance and sanctification. Right, right. And we're going to look at a couple of things that are really interesting. But before the Passover meal started, or actually in the beginning stages of it, um, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and he would return to his father. And he knew that his father had given him authority over everything mm -hmm. and that he had come from God and he would return to God. So what's he do? He gets up from the table, he takes off his robe, he wraps a towel around his waist mm -hmm. and he pours water into a basin. And then he begins to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. Jesus came to Simon Peter and he said, Lord, you're going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. Mm. No, Peter said, protested, you will never ever wash my feet. And Jesus, <coughs> Jesus replied, unless I wash you, mm. you won't belong to me. And Simon Peter said, then mm. wash my hands and head, head as well, mm. Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely mm. clean. Mm. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. He was talking about who would betray him. Mm. And this is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. And after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I'm doing? You call me teacher and Lord, 
And you are right, because that's what I am. Mm -hmm. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a beautiful, beautiful story. Because, you know, to be a servant, to have to mm -hmm. wash people's feet. Now, remember, there was no paved roads in those days. You know, they were yeah. dirt roads. And so you're picking up dust at, at, at right. the minimum around your ankles, right? And your feet, you And when sandals. you get cracks in your feet, I mean, there's really open to disease and a lot mm -hmm. of other things. So mm -hmm. keeping your feet clean was really uh, just nice for the people you visited. You didn't bring dirt in their house. It was nice for you not to get sick. Um, it was just a real labor of love and incredibly practical. I love when God is practical. That's why Absolutely. I love messages that when you listen to them, you're like, okay, what, what does that mean for me practically? Right. How do I apply this? Right. And so, okay, here, what, what can we glean from this, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, having a heart of humility and recognizing that this is an opportunity. You're going to have opportunities to serve other people. And the most important thing is to take the low road. You know, Jesus being, knowing who he had, all authority, who he was. Right. And yet he let he, his deity go. So yeah. That, yeah. He laid it service. all down yep. so that he could serve. Mm -hmm. Right. Knowing that they needed to have their feet washed. Right. It mm -hmm. wasn't beneath him. There was nothing beneath him. That was actually the lowest level of a servant in that day. Because he had to wash not only the dust, but sometimes you stepped in animal stuff or whatever because there were animals all over up and down the road. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was an honorable thing. To, for you to be able to walk into a house with your feet clean. Mm -hmm. And so this servant would have to take the humble road and wash your feet. And so Jesus did that, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, but then he said, but you're not all dirty. This is just some of you. And so just part of you is. And so that's our reality. We walk this earth, all of us do. Mm -hmm. And we're all going to pick up some dust. And so part of our work is to help each other, you know, to clean off the dust, you know? Mm -hmm. We need to take the humble position of a servant, recognize that we walk the earth as well, and we will pick up some dust from walking on this fallen mm -hmm. world. But we're called to wash each other's feet as we help each other become more Christ-like. Yeah, in Galatians 6, one through three, it says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you faithful has fallen into a trap and is snared by sin, don't stand idle and watch his demise. Gently restore him. Being careful not to step into your own snare, shoulder each other's burdens, and then you will live as the law of the anointed teaches us. Don't take this opportunity to think you are better than those who slip because you aren't. Then you become the fool and deceive yourself. That's in the voice. That's really good. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Oh, the Passover meal. Yeah. So so after he basically prepares everything and he humbles his heart and he washes his disciples' feet, now they're getting ready for the Get meal. Get the bread and the four cups of wine. Right. Yes. And and so um, one of these times I would love to be able to do a set of meal. I've yeah, done that's it in a the whole, past. Yeah, that's but a that whole teaching. But that would be teaching. a whole new long, long teaching. But uh, for right now, we're just going to talk about two of the elements that we celebrate uh, some churches once a month, some of them every week. Uh, but we, we celebrate this to remember, right? And so in Matthew 26, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples. Mm -hmm. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. And so he had, it was a flat bread. Uh, the reason it was, a, uh, it was unleavened bread, they didn't have time to let the bread rise and so because they had to leave in the middle of the night, this is the story of the Passover when they were slaves in Egypt. And, um, and God had promised that they would be freed and he was going to restore them and take them yeah, back to the Yeah, not only be land. freed, but when they left, they were going to be given gifts from those that were, <laughs> they were holding them hostage. That, like the that's right. were going to give them all their blessings. Yeah. And, and their wealth. And, and their wealth. And, and so one of the cool things about this story is that um, they were going to wait until um, into the certain day that they would be told, and they were to put um, blood over the the uh, door sills sides, and then when um, when death came over the land, it would pass over mm. the house where the people were, and death would not enter that mm. into that home, and so a lot of people died in Egypt during that time, and uh, so finally the the king of Egypt said, go. Get out of here. Mm. And so they had to leave abruptly, like now. You have to leave mm. now. And so they left. And so the, the Passover is speaking of death going passing over so that they would not be affected by it because of the blood of the lamb mm. that was on the doorposts and on the right. sill. Mm -hmm. And so, so, um, so they celebrate that every year. Well, now fast forward some time, and here's Jesus, right? And so this bread um, would have like holes in it. They would have a bunch of holes in it and a big piercing through it. And that, that would symbolize the Messiah one day was going to come and was going to be whipped, right? And pierced. And, and pierced. And, mm -hmm. and so, 
So Jesus, and there were three, three pieces of bread, and they were in this, in this linen cloth, and they had three pockets. The one in the middle is what he pulled out of, and he says, and he gets this, and he says, take, eat, this is my body. So he was telling them, look, you've been celebrating every year mm -hmm. the coming of the Messiah, and he was going to give of his body mm. for you. And he's saying, take, eat, this mm. is me. Mm. Could you imagine? I mean, he's fulfilling it right in front yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. There's no mistake. He's making it really clear now. That's right. So take, eat, eat of this. This is my body. Amen. So I'm going to pray a blessing on that as we take together. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for sending your son. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the price that was paid. And by giving his body, uh, allowing his body to be whipped and pierced uh, for us, for our transgressions, uh, for our sickness, for our disease, it says in the Old Testament. Thank you for all these things. And so we receive this with a heart filled with gratitude. Amen. Amen. It says, and then he took a cup. I'm not going to talk with my mouth open, so I'm going to put my fist in front of my mouth. Mm, and um, we had given thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sin. And he says, I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so, so I just shared about the matzah bread, right? <coughs> um, which is broken for us. Now, the interesting thing about this cup is that it was the third cup. And then there are four cups in the Passover meal. Um, each cup points to the four I wills that is found in Exodus 6. He says, that, that's, which is when they were a, released, right, from um, Egypt being under Egypt's rule. He said, I am the Lord, and he says, I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt, the Egyptians, and I will save you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. And then he says, I will take you to be my people. So those are the four cups, the four I wills. <clears throat> That's Exodus 6. Mm -hmm. I will bring you out, which points to sanctification. Mm -hmm. That's what God mm -hmm. does with us. Mm -hmm. He separates us from the things <coughs> of this world. I will save you, right? He delivers us, mm -hmm. right? And then he says, I will redeem you. This is the third cup, the cup of redemption, which is what we're gonna drink right now. And then he says, I will take you as my people. Mm -hmm. And so what we do with this cup is, this is the cup of redemption. Mm -hmm. Redemption is where he buys us back, mm -hmm. right? He pays for us. Mm -hmm. And so redemption has value. Uh, you can get a coupon and it says redemption value. That means it's worth so much. Well, he had to redeem us. He had to pay for us, us by paying with his life. Mm -hmm. And the only way he could give his life was to give blood, mm -hmm. to, to give up his blood. So basically, so he grabs this third cup, which is the cup of redemption, and he says, drink all of this and remember me mm -hmm. because this is the cup of the new covenant. So there's a whole new agreement, a new life mm -hmm. that we're going to live with him because of what he did on the cross. So I just want to encourage you, to, to remember every time you take up the cup, remember the agreement that he made with you mm -hmm. and that he's faithful. He will never break his agreement with us, mm -hmm. his covenant. So let's pray. Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed for us and that your blood not only forgives us, but it takes it away. Not only do you cover it, but you remove it from us. It, it's not a part of our lives anymore. And with that, you restore us with that, you bring us back into a right fellowship, right standing with you. With all that, you bless us and you walk with us. So God, uh, we just thank you for this. And we receive this with hearts filled with gratitude. We just want to say thank you and we love you. Amen. Amen. And with sweet. that. Well, thanks for sharing Passover with us and sharing... Uh, Holy Thursday with us and uh, we missed you. I hope <clears throat> <coughs> this video finds you well. Thank you for those that have been praying for my ankle mm -hmm. and continue to email us and message us and let us know how we can pray for you and how things are going in your life. We love Amen. when you reach out to connect with us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Have a blessed week. Mm -hmm. Have a blessed weekend. And remember, Friday's coming tomorrow and we're going to celebrate a, a, a terrible day in so many ways but a beautiful day in mm -hmm. so many other ways. And especially Sunday, because Sunday's where it ch right, everything changes. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have a blessed weekend. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Hosanna to the King of Kings, Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of flame, be exalted, O Lord our God, Hosanna in the highest.